Welcome home to St. Anne's. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you. We're not even going to pretend today. I'm just going to start by sitting down because, oh my gosh. All right. Y'all's arthritis is terrible, right? Because if y'all are having a bad day, I'm probably having a bad day too. So, all right. Well, um, that's a happy little gospel, isn't it? Gosh, everyone loved John. He was delightful. Um, there's a reason they beheaded him. <laughs> when I talk about sermons that don't preach, John the Baptist don't preach. John the Baptist gets beheaded. Um, But to be honest, today is the day here at St. Anne's that we celebrate um, St. Nicholas. So I'm actually going to talk about St. Nicholas a little bit. Um, So you can wait for John the Baptist. Don't worry, we'll talk about John the Baptist another time. Um, And if you ever want to hear fun stories about John the Baptist, I'm here for you. So um, talk to me later about John the Baptist. But let's talk about St. Nick. Um, Now stop me if some of this seems familiar to you. Um, but there was a man, um, who dressed up very warmly, and, um, he broke into people's houses. Well, he didn't actually break in, break in, but, um, he watched their behaviors, and then he would give gifts. Stop me if you've heard this somewhere before. And would sometimes go by the name St. Nick. I know. I love it when I break it to people that um, Santa Santa Claus, St. Nick, they have some similarities. All right. But um, and then I love telling people, well, you know, St. Nick was a real person, right? What? Mm hmm. Yeah. Didn't get invented in the 50s by Sears Roebuck. We've had him for a while. You guys know that I love to point out that things that people think are fairly recent, we invented like couple thousand years ago we've we've been doing this a while so Saint Nicholas let's talk about Nicholas Nicholas of Myrna um, was a bishop um, fourth century so really like 300s okay so when we go back in history when we say fourth century we really mean the century century after the the history teachers are like yeah it gets really confusing sometimes. So when I give you some of these years, you're going to be like, but that's not four, that's three, Meg. Yes. Thank you. I know. I like to have history teachers, like, dotted throughout the room. Chris, over here. Yeah, we got this. Yes, thank you. Yes. So um, Nicholas um, was a bishop. Um, this is around the time of Diocletian. Um, who is one of those great emperors who hated Christians and loved to kill them um, and persecute them. He didn't spend a whole lot of time actually killing them because that's a lot of work. It's just more fun to pick on people, right? It costs a lot less, too. Um, So um, Nicholas is is a bishop at this time, Christian bishop, Um, and he is famous for um, his generosity and his love of of children, of people in need, um, sailor, like, Nicholas is literally the patron saint of everything, all right? Like, everybody has claimed St. Nicholas, because he's just that fabulous. Everybody wants St. Nicholas. Um, so, um, Mira at the time, Mira is at the time in Greece, it is now modern day Turkey. So, if you're trying to think of a, of a point of reference, think Turkey. Um, so some of these things you're going to kind of recognize. So um, the big story about Nicholas is in his parish, in his um, area that he's the bishop over, there is a man, fairly poor man, who has the misfortune of having three daughters. Oh, I know. Those of us with daughters are like, oh, man, that sounds terrible. Love me some daughters. Anyway, but at that time, daughters are expensive. I mean, they still are. Asking what my dad did when my sister and I both graduated grad school and got married. He got a Cadillac and a puppy. <laughs> He's like, I'm done. Okay, daughters are expensive, and they're especially expensive at this time because you've got to pay someone to take them. 
I know. I don't know if my dad did any under the table deals with Eric or not. He may have. I don't know. I wasn't around for him. Um, but at that time, you, you got to pay someone to take them. So you got to give them a dowry because, gosh, like who wants these daughters? You got to give them some money. But if you're poor, it is hard to have money for a dowry, and it is hard to therefore pay a man to take these expensive daughters that you have produced. Ugh. Also at that time, if a woman is not married, well, frankly, um, she doesn't have a great future. Okay, so if you read the more child-appropriate stories, she might be sold into slavery. That's, pro <laughs> that's, that's a way of covering up what probably would have actually happened because we're trying to write child-appropriate stories. But y'all get what I'm saying here, right? Yeah. Nod and say, yes, Meg. I get what you're laying down here. <laughs> okay. Because it is, like, Kids Sunday, and I don't want to go into too much detail. Because then y'all get mad at me later, and you're like, you probably shouldn't have said that in a sermon, Meg. And I'm like, whoops, too late. It's on the Internet now. Um, okay. <clears throat> so... Nicholas is, of course, very, very concerned because we don't want our daughters to go into this life that they're probably going to have. And so um, he's like, okay, but this guy is way too proud. He's not going to take any money or any help from um, the church. So what am I going to do? So he gets on his beautiful white stallion because when I'm a bishop, I too will have a beautiful white stallion to ride around in. Just wait for now. I have a dog and a possum. I have a possum living in my barn, too. I do not have a beautiful white sign because they're expensive. But bishops have them. I know. I need to talk to Diane and see if she has a beautiful white stallion. I'm not sure. Anyway, I think she drives a Honda, actually. That's not nearly as exciting, but whatever. So he goes in the evening, and um, he's like, okay, I got to go when they're not going to know, um, when they're probably already asleep. But conveniently... For Nicholas, this is so convenient. Okay. The daughters have washed their stockings that day. And where would you hang your stockings to dry them at night? Where would be a warm place? Fireplace. Yes. Brilliant. You guys are thinking along the same lines. Thank goodness. Now, there are two ways of telling this story. Some people have chimneys and some people don't. So, this is the answer. When your children come to you and say, how is Santa Claus going to get in if we don't have a chimney? We're all worried about those people, right, who don't have a chimney. It's okay. Nick got this figured out. There are two ways that this happens. One, the daughters have their stockings hung up by the fire with care in hopes that they'll dry in the warm evening air. <laughs> I'm here for you. Okay, so he rides by on his horse. Some stories, the windows are open, and that's convenient. Some stories, there are no open windows, so he's got to use a chimney. It's fine. We got it covered either way. He rides by on his horse. He throws three gold balls, and he probably should play for our Royals because the man has got the aim of our quarterback, Mahomes. He's got, nails it, nails it. I know, we need him in the Royals, too. Our Chiefs got it. Our Royals, not so much. Okay, it's fine. He rides by. He throws the gold ball in. Bam, bam, bam in the stockings. Thus saving these daughters from an unfortunate reality. Thanks, Nicholas. That's one good story. You may have heard some of those points of interest somewhere before. I don't know. Um, also, he is known for um, saving children from other um, unfortunate um, events. He also is known for calming the seas. He's um, um, the patron saint of sailors and, and boats and things like that. Why does all of this matter? I mean, A, they're fun stories and they tell well. But I think the real reason that we are so enamored by Nicholas is because you have this person who comes from wealth and prestige and all these things, because he does. That's why his parents, his parents are very, very wealthy. Um, before he, before they die. Um, so what is it about this that even now, even in our completely secular world, we are sucked in by this story. We are sucked in by the story of somebody who 
goes to extraordinary lengths and efforts to give joy with absolutely no expectation of anything in return. What is it about that that just hooks us? Because frankly, that is what hooks us, right? The whole, the whole Christmas secular world that is like totally done with baby Jesus because ew, Barnes, gross. I'm here to tell you. But there's something about this generosity piece that hooks us, no matter who you are. What is it about that? Because that's what really sucks us in, right? And that's where you and I can plug in on this story. Because chances are most of us are not going to have beautiful white stallions. And we're probably not going to give the wealth that are going to help people in poverty have a new life. But we can do something, right? And that's what gets us here. And that's what this true Christmas spirit is that sucks us in about Nicholas. And why it's so important for us to tell these stories, to reclaim these stories. Because as Christians, these are our stories. These are our stories. Now, we've allowed the secular world to, to take them over and to change them, right? But at the end of the day, they're our stories. And why don't we claim them more strongly, more loudly? Because here's our message. Our message is not that somebody's watching you do what is right and what is wrong and is going to give you coal or is going to give you good things, because all of this, did you know, anyone here, never mind, I won't ask, I'll ask the parents later online, um, <laughs> what sort of Christmas traditions you follow, but a lot of them are about um, control, right, like if we do these things, our kids will behave in this way, if we do these things, then people will behave in this way, it's all about punishment, right, punishment and reward, it's all about control, but the thing is, the Christian message never was. Nicholas was never about punishment and control. Jesus is never about punishment and control. It is always about obscene, extravagant generosity. That is without earning. This man cannot earn what Nicholas is about to do. Cannot. These girls could never earn this kind of generosity. And yet... That is this message, right? That's the message that you and I are given. Is that you and I, our children, cannot earn this love. You cannot earn into or out of love. It's just extravagant. It's ridiculous. It's absurd. And that is the message that Christians offer. And that's the real message of the Christian season. Is not whether or not you're going to get stuff, but that no matter what, God is going to come into our world and do something ridiculous and extravagant and absurd. It doesn't make sense. What Nicholas does doesn't make sense. And there are tons of stories of Nicholas all over. There are stories of him while he's bishop. There are stories of him after he's dead. Ew, do some research about what supposedly, like, appears at his grave. It's gross. Man, it's weird. Anyway does miraculous things if you, like, smear it on things. Gross. Ew. I love saint stories because they're so disturbing. <laughs> but it is all about extravagance. It is all about absurd. It's all about things that don't make logical sense. We cannot earn our way into or out of love. And that's the message of Christianity. That's the message of all of this. And so I hope that this season you can do something ridiculous and absurd that in no way benefits you. It cannot benefit you. Because that's what love is about, right? It's about we can't earn it. And other people can't earn it either. And to be honest, it's not love if you can get paid back for it. Is it? Then it's just like commodity exchange. That's weird. And Christmas has been turned into a commodity, hasn't it? It's all about commodity exchange. But it never was. And Nicholas never was about that. So what I offer you today is to take some time to think of something ridiculous and absurd, something extravagant that you can do for somebody else that in no way could they ever possibly repay you. Maybe they won't even know about it. And to be honest, it will make your heart grow three sizes today. Points if you get the reference. 
then you're my people. I tried to make a Monty Python reference the other day at work, and literally nobody was having their like, well, money who? And then I was like, it's fine. I'll make a six reference. Have you guys heard the musical Six? I tried to make a six reference. Sorry, not sorry for what I said. And they're like, what? So I'm super excited if somebody got the Grinch reference. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you.